What's up? It's your boy Donovan and in Art Vlog 12, we're going to start off with the Paper Shoe Project. In the last vlog, I talked about how our current personal project was to design a paper shoe. I started off my shoe with a platform, which was just four layers of one inch thick styrofoam that were Gorilla glued together and then sawed and cut into the shape that I needed for the platform. I added some grooves at the bottom of the platform and I rounded out the corners of the shoes as well, made it into a foot shape. Then I taped it up with masking tape because I knew that I had to hot glue some cardstock or some paper on the outside for my color and for my final like material. Um, and you cannot use hot glue on styrofoam or rather you shouldn't because it'll melt the styrofoam and then release a bunch of harmful chemicals. I played around with a few different colors of cardstock. I still have plenty of it from the beginning of this semester. My first choice was the lime green cardstock, but you're gonna see later that I actually switched this up quite a bit. I started playing around with like a clog shape by cutting the paper and folding it down to sort of sculpt the paper around the platform. Okay, the height is wrong, but the shape is so super right. Like that is a clog. This was the point where I realized I need to do something else. So here is the remixed, the redo, the second try. This is volume two. I pulled all of that other paper off of the platform and then started over with completely different colors and going back to my sandal concept instead of doing the clog. Once I decided on a sandal, all of the other pieces just fell into place. It wasn't that difficult to make this look interesting and also to stay true to my aesthetic and, and what I like creatively. This is the final shoe. I love it. It's a platform sandal that I would wear in real life in the summertime, especially if that strap on the back is like an elastic strap. I would love if these were like really truly wearable. But this is life size. This can actually fit on my <laughs> big fat foot. <laughs> it just would be a bit fragile for taking out into the elements. In drawing class, we are experimenting with Conte crayon. We had the choice of either drawing these plastic bag still lifes that had been pinned up and also some fabric still lifes that had been pinned up. I chose the plastic bags. First drawing is like around one of the first stages that I had. This is the current stage is a lot more developed, but this is not the final. I also had a homework assignment for drawing class. I had to do a charcoal drawing of a tool. I just chose a small wrench out of my toolkit and drew a few quick thumbnail sketches after setting up my, my miniature still life on my desk. I used the subtractive method for my charcoal drawing. I covered the page in charcoal and then used my eraser to shape the highlights, then went back in with charcoal to define the darks, erasing, drawing, erasing, drawing back and forth until I got this. In 
In my last vlog, I also talked about how in my 3D design class, our next official assignment is to do a large scale sculpture of either a figure, like a human, a machine, or an animal. I was playing around with the idea of doing human figures, but I ended up settling on doing a toad, a Sonoran desert toad to be exact. I love how fat his tummy is. I love the way he sits. And I think this will be really something really fun and interesting once it's complete. So I started off with the armature and the armature is made almost completely out of foil. It was a giant foil ball. And then once it got large enough, I added some wire onto the armature. Like I taped it onto the foil ball to give it more shape so that I didn't have to use as much foil. Then I covered that up with another layer of foil on the outside. I'm using the same process to make the legs. The legs look like little chicken wings <laughs> when they first start out. But you're gonna see if you stick around for next week's vlog that the legs turn out perfect. He looks so great once they're actually onto his fat little foil body. Somehow, I also found time to get my hair done this week even though I am literally in crunch time and I have all these assignments to do. I have no extra time to be spending on um, beauty, but I'm somehow making it work. Feel free to stick around for um, just my little vanity rant if you'd like. Um, thank you so much for watching. This has been Boy Donovan as always, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. This will be like my undercover celebrity outfit. This is my I'm just going for iced coffee real quick outfit. Hold on, let me get my thing. Yeah, I look like I do. Um, I do the lighting for somebody's like live shows. They're gonna be like quiet on set, and all you gonna hear is this. That's the one. <laughs> I love my beads. Low key, it's becoming like a stem. I very much love the sound. And I like looking at them because they look like jelly. And I love that it's rainbow. Cause I really like wearing all black with some rainbow accents or with like just some color popped in, some patterns. That's my shit. It's probably because when I was a scene kid, when I was a scene kid, black and rainbow was my shit. That was literally my uniform. I always had to have a black tee that has some sort of rainbow or colorful graphics on it. This was one of the only times that I felt validated in my aesthetic and in my personality by my parents. But for Christmas, they bought me a pair of Converse that had, what was it like? Two or three different layers of fabric around, like on them. So they match perfectly because they had all the same colors. And I was really stunting. That was, that had to be junior high. That was when I was truly in the, in the depths of my scene phase, my emo phase, my scene phase. Yeah, black and rainbow. So I think that's why I'm back to that but just more, a little more cuter, a little more sophisticated, you know, a little more ghetto -er, you know, a little bit more black girl. I'm gonna go get my nose pierced again for my birthday. That's coming up and I'm super excited. But when we talk about like healing your inner child and shit, these beats, they're doing it. They're doing it for me. They're doing it for me.